Hi, Lee Veras here, kicking it old school with Photoshop tips and techniques for teachers and students. Today's rant is about the bane of digital photographers everywhere. I'm talking about banding. Yes, banding is something that you can see in a print, and it can be a, quite an expensive problem. Uh, I'm going to show you how to fix it. And before I go any further, no, uh, you can't eliminate the problem just by simply working in 16 bits. So how do we deal with this problem? Banding can be an expensive problem in a print, and we really need to catch it before wasting any more money on ink and paper. Um, editing in 16 bits does not necessarily solve the problem, and there are many cases where working in 16 bits makes it harder to catch and more difficult to fix. I'm going to show you how to use a special curve adjustment layer to visualize any banding before going to print. And we'll see how to use the spatter filter in 8 bits to kill the bands once and for all. So let's get started. So here is uh, an image. Uh, this is an actual um, job that came to me when I was uh, the digital manager for a big professional photo lab in Los Angeles. And this was uh, supplied by uh, a photographer, and it was in 16 bits. Actually, you can kind of see this is a little section of the, of the image. I'm protecting the innocent here by not revealing the actual image. But it's an area, uh, this is where we commonly see banding. It's in a sky, and you can see it's 16 bits. And, um, you know, we kind of assume that uh, it's, it's smooth, right? And you, you can't, if you look at this now, you can't really see can't see any bands. We're, we're at 100% we're at here. Sometimes you can see bands if you go to the individual channels. If we look in the red channel, uh, I don't know if you can see this on the YouTube uh, compressed video, but there's, there is some subtle bands going on here. Um, and it, sometimes you can see it. The problem in, in 16 bits is I don't actually know whether these bands are part of the monitor, because the monitor is an 8-bit uh, display, or if they're really um, in the file. Um, so it, it's, it is kind of difficult sometimes to actually um, visualize the bands that are going to occur in the print. So um, now let's, let's have a look at this. Okay, there, I'm going to show you a little trick to making the bands really jump out at you. And uh, it, it, you can see it in the color image uh, by using this little trick, which was invented by Ed Manning, who was a Quantel paintbox engineer. And this is the days before the Macintosh kind of took over the graphics industry. So this is a very old school technique. And uh, basically, we're going to make a curve and I'm going to put a bunch of points on this curve and just don't get excited yet. We're not really trying to do a correction with the curve. We're actually going to kind of mess up the image in a very specific way. So I'm, I'm placing all these points on the curve so that I can, um, I can force all the areas in the curve to fall along more vertical line segments. So this is also referred to as solar curves. Um, so we're just making this goofy sine wavy curve here so that there's it's all peaks and valleys. And I, you can kind of see how the bands are starting to show up here. So these are bands actually that were caused by um, by running a Gaussian blur filter to smooth out the sky. So in this case, the, the blur filter actually degraded the quality of the original sky. And instead of smoothing it out, it introduced bands uh, in 16 bits, if you can believe that. So, you know, we can see the bands. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and convert this back to 8 bits uh, because the fix for these bands is actually um, is actually a filter that is unavailable in 16 bits. So here we have the banded area. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to turn that off temporarily. And I'm going to 
duplicate the sky into an empty layer. I'll, and in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and, um, well, let's do it this way. So I can run, uh, uh, I use the magic wand filter to select this area because it's a gradient. It's going to want to select the whole area of the sky here. And I'm going to jump it into a new, um, I'll jump it into a new layer. So we'll just do Command J, and now we have sky and with an empty area here. And um, I want to fill this empty area um, with more sky. Uh, but before I do that, I'm going to save this selection. So I'm just going to Command click on that layer. Uh, that makes that selection again. And uh, I'm going to save the selection right here. We'll just put it in a new channel. Okay, so we'll be able to get that, that uh, selection back. Oh, I already have it in that channel. Um, all right, so now inverse the selection. One way of doing it. And what my goal is to select is, is to fill this empty area. And I want to make sure that I, I don't leave a telltale line in there. Um, if I hide the selection, if we get close to the edge, sometimes there's a little line from where the trees and what have you were. And so I'm going to uh, expand the selection now just a little bit. Um, oh, I can five pixel ought to do it. So that it just gets outside of that, that little line. And now what I want to do is fill this. I'm going to go fill. And I'm going to use content aware. Now, I'm, it's going to just fill it with blue sky, but it's going to make sure that along this edge, the tones match, no matter what they are. So we're going to say OK and let it uh, fill with sky. It doesn't really matter because that's down, down below the horizon. But it will matter when we run the, the filter. So now, um, now what we've got is uh, we're going to run a special filter on this. And it's this filter here. It's inside the filter gallery, which is not available in 16 bits. Uh, so what we're going to do is um, call it up here. Get my dialog to be the right size here. I'm going to use the spatter filter. It's under brush strokes, spatter. We put the spray radius all the way at 25 and the smoothness all the way down to 1. And you can't really see what it's doing, but it is um, diffusing the, the subtle bands uh, and it, that's a sort of like a special way of adding noise without actually adding light and dark noise. Um, so we're going to run that spatter filter. Okay, now I'm going to turn both those layers on and we'll put our band, uh, our band visualization, our Ed's curves here, the solar curves. And you can see that if I turn this layer off, we have bands. When I turn it on, it all that that spatter filter has diffused those bands so that they're they're invisible now and they will not print in any print that's just gone you can't just can't see it um, so the goal here and the reason I filled that area down below is that um, if I ran it directly on the sky if, even if I if I uh, selected, let's say, just selected this area, okay, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, this, this is the area that's selected. I'm gonna run the filter on that area, but let me, let me hide the marching ants here. And if I run the the spatter filter, it pulls from outside the selection. It pulls the uh, the horizon into the image. So that's that's no good. We can't we can't do that. So that's why I jump it into a new layer and fill that area with other sky. So when it when it diffuses, it only diffuses sky color in there. So now we really just have to pull that um, that selection back um, and 
put a layer mask there to bring back the original horizon. And now we have a smooth sky. So the key takeaway here, though, is the Ed's curves. Uh, you can do this whenever you have a, a clear area of sky and you just want to make sure that you can visualize whether it has bands or not. Uh, run the Ed's curves and you can see if you see this kind of stuff, that might show up in print. And so why take the chance? Just run your spatter filter and uh, take care of it once and for all. Okay. So to review, um, to fix the banding, we're going to use Ed's curves first to visualize the bands and also to see when they are fixed. We're going to copy the banded area into a new layer and use a layer mask to hide the textured areas, the areas that have detail, like those that are below the horizon in the sky, and fill those areas with content-aware fill from the smooth banded areas. You run the spatter filter in the filter gallery, and you have to be in 8 bits to get to this filter, uh, and that will solve your problem once and for all. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Photoshop Rant. You might be interested in more detailed information on my website, and you might consider following me on YouTube and Twitter to find out about my various classes and workshops. Be sure and like the video, and please subscribe to my channel on YouTube. You might also consider following me on Instagram. I have two books in print available on Amazon in Kindle as well as paper versions, Mastering Exposure and the Zone System for Digital Photographers, and my bestseller, Skin, The Complete Guide to Digitally Lighting, Photographing, and Retouching Faces and Bodies. I also have a very detailed discussion of my backup strategies in my ebook, Quick Before They're Gone, A Photographer's Guide to Backup, available on Amazon and directly from my website. If you're looking for more in-depth Photoshop tutorials, I have a number of video courses available from my online school under the Education menu at veras.com. Thank you for watching. Post your questions and suggestions for topics to explore under the video, and I'll see you in the next Photoshop rant.